What is going on guys? Welcome back. My name is WolfClick. I'm the 2016 Pokemon VGC World Champion and today I am walking you guys through my guide to Tapu Koko. So, if you're just joining us now and you're thinking, what on earth is Tapu Koko? I'll give you a bit of a rundown. So basically, oh, well we're not accepting that. Basically, here's the way it works. Tapu Koko is four of the guardian Pokemon of Alola, meaning um, it's one of a, a group of Pokemon all named Tapu something. This happens to be Tapu Koko. And the defining feature about Tapu Koko is that its ability Electric Surge activates Electric Terrain when it steps in the field, um, when it enters the battlefield. Basically, what Electric Terrain does is it gives a 1.5 times boost to any Electric moves and prevents sleep um, on any Pokemon in the entire field that are touching the ground. So no Flying Pokemon, no Levitating Pokemon. Um, yeah, and I think that's the only thing that's immune to it. So it's very interesting, and it basically gives all Electric type moves of Choice Band or Choice Specs boost as long as the user is on the ground so basically it makes them very 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 powerful and it makes Tapu Koko a really interesting Pokemon so let's take a look at Tapu Koko important things to note base 130 speed is really fast it's as fast as Aerodactyl which is really important um it's overall stats low special attack low special defense low defense low HP and honestly low attack like that's not 115 isn't it's not too low but it's, it's really not that great either but thankfully Tapu Koko is still a really powerful Pokemon thanks to its high speed and its electric terrain boosting its electric type attack so with that in mind, let's jump right into it. First set that we have here is just kind of your standard Tapu Koko set. So um, I didn't want to mess around with the EVs too much because um, because like it's you're not going to like EV Tapu Koko to live a lot of stuff defensively. That is the thing. Um, at least not initially. So um, what I thought of this set was just your standard moves. Protective Wild Charge are mandatory because Protect is always mandatory on, on VGC sets like this one. Um, and Wild Charge is its best electric type slash its only physical electric type move that's like viable, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. Anyways, we I also gave it U-Turn and Brave Bird because, it, it, like, U-Turn and Brave Bird are both its... First of all, Tapu Koko might be a bird, even though it's not flying type, which is weird. Um, it doesn't get player off, so no physical fairy stab there. It doesn't even get Moonblast. And um, U-Turn is just for positioning. It's not going to do a ton of damage, but it can it can allow Tapu Koko to be more mobile. Um, and honestly, with U-Turn, it, it won't do an insignificant amount. It will just do, like... It, it's good chip damage, and then Brave Bird allows Tapu Koko to hit Pokemon like Tapu Bulu and other, other, like, other Pokemon that resist grass types that resist... Um, that resist uh, electric. So let's run the calcs. First things first is 244 attack, life orb, wild charge versus max HP, four defense, Tapu Lele is going to do a lot of damage. Um, as you can see, it has an 87.5% chance to Oko, which is really impressive. Unfortunately, Tapu Koko will be taking a lot of damage from recoil uh, because wild charge is recoil, life orb is recoil, and as you can see, 146 space like, like like untampered with HP stat is really low so he's going to be taking a lot of damage but um he's definitely Tapu Koko definitely fits the category of like glass cannon where he's going to do a lot of damage and if you can keep him around for a long time like that's great but you just have to be careful because because <laughs> he's very easy to KO um and so yeah he's definitely a very momentum based Pokemon and I was curious about some other stuff so I ran Brave Bird versus Tapu Bolo. not going to KO but going to do a lot of damage and definitely very threatening um assuming they're max HP if they don't have max HP then he can't KO um, as you can see, but most Tapu Bolo, I would expect to have, like, a good bit of HP investment. Um, so you shouldn't count your Brave Bird coming, but just the fact that you can do, like, 80% to their Tapu Pokemon and doesn't rely on the terrain is very important. Oh, yeah, this Calc is an electric terrain, by the way, so in Psychic Terrain, that's going to do less, um, as you can see. Last up, we have Wild Charge versus Celesteela, which is a very pokey Pokemon. I've talked about it before, and as long as they have this amount of defense or less, it's going to KO. So that's all, like, I don't expect Celesteela to be running this much defense at all so you're basically going to KO Celesteel at, at ma neutral as long as you're not intimidated which is really good because Celesteel is really hard to KO especially in a metagame like this where you have less like super powered Pokemon so next set next set is choice band similar idea um except that you don't want the life orb recoil and it's, it's like so the positives of this set versus the last one is you lose the negatives I guess are you lose protect um and you lose the ability to change moves but the positives are you, you get less recoil damage and um also you have the like you you your moves it stronger so for example i just showed you guys that calc with tapu bulu here as you can see it actually ko's which is like really really big um 68.8 percent of the time they can run more bulk than this of course but that's like and the fact that you have a much better chance and like even like a weak priority move like mimic shadow sneak you could pair this with and it would ko which is really good um and i was also curious about i was like what about like a pokemon like a lola marowak where who's immune to electric type attacks and i was like well let's let's run this calc so uh, this is really interesting because if you can predict the Marowak to switch in and you Brave Bird that slot, you can two it KO it, which is huge because Marowak is like one of the like one of the best answers to Tapu Koko. So the fact that you can run Brave Bird and then like not have to worry about Lightning Rod and to be able to two it KO it is like very 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 big. So that's awesome um, when it comes to Marowak uh, and Tapu Koko especially. So then I was like, okay, so we have two kind of offensive sets. I don't really like Choice Scarf here, guys, because Tapu Koko is already so fast. So I was like, 
what else is there? You could run Focus Sash. I didn't talk about that set, but I also came up with an Assault Vest set where um, you don't run you don't run max speed. You invest a lot more in, in HP and to kind of mitigate the like so with physical Tapu Koko runs Brave Bird and Wild Charge, both of which have recoil. So I was like, okay, what else could we what else could we do that could be good? So I was like, all right, special Assault Vest Tapu Tapu Koko. So I haven't tested this. So if you test this and let, like and you enjoy it, please let me know. Um, the EVs are still kind of tentative, but. Overall idea here is even though Tapu Koko doesn't have huge special attack, it actually is relatively low special attack. Uh, electric Terrain will make its attacks to a sizable chunk, and you can't intimidate it. Um, and so the idea here is, I wanted to make sure that out of Psychic Terrain, Tapu Koko could always was always three eight KO'd by Tapu Lele. So um, that's what this spread does. I mean, it's not fancy or anything. Like you just need max HP as you can see. And then I also in return I wanted to two eight KO Garchomp. So like basically, if you intimidate Garchomp. If you pair Tapu Koko with Intimidate Pokemon, and I'll, I have some suggestions for which Intimidate Pokemon you can pair it with, you can always live in Earthquake, and then you can Dazzling Gleam the Garchomp, and like uh, they might be they might be counting on their Garchomp to be your Tapu Koko counter, and so the fact that you can outspeed, that's what the 40 speed EVs do, and the fact that you can live a minus one Earthquake with um, with your Tapu Koko is really, really viable or valuable. So those are the three sets, guys. I hope you found them interesting. As for some potential partners, let's go over here. And the first part I recommend is Crocodile. So Crocodile, especially with this last set, is really good, but in general, it's also really good. Uh, Crocodile being immune to Discharge is really, really valuable here. Um, it gets Earthquake, and so um, two of these sets don't have Protect, so the Earthquake isn't that good. But just having an Intimidate Pokemon, having a Ground-type Pokemon, uh, having something for Steel-types and fire types and all this stuff could be very very uh, very valuable and of course most of the suggestions i'm going to recommend um for these sets are going to have an intimidate pokemon just because i think intimidate is an extremely valuable resource in vgc um yeah more on that in a second next up we have alolan raichu alolan raichu's surge surfer ability has been touched on a bit but um in electric terrain essentially it doubles its speed and raichu has like a pretty high speed so in, in, basically it's swift swim for electric terrain, which is really interesting. And, and Alolan Raichu has a lot of really cool stuff. It can go fake out. Um, it can go electric type moves that will be boosted by electric terrain. It can also go Encore, so that if your opponent tries to shield itself from Tapu Koko's enormous damage output, you can just get Encore into the Protect. And thanks to Alolan Raichu's like, Surge Surfer ability, it's very fast. And it's not even it doesn't even count as a priority move because... Um, because it's not a priority move. It's just very, very, very fast. So um, this strategy is definitely susceptible to this trick room with these two, but thanks to Hapakoku's big offensive pre like presence, I think it, I think it's possible to mitigate that a bit. Um, and the last one, actually, I have is my Lotic, because... So Tapu Koko is very weak to Intimidate, and my Lotic's competitive ability kind of helps to mitigate that, where uh, the opponent might want to bring in an Intimidate Pokemon to lower Tapu Koko's damage output, but if they do, then they'll run into my Lotic's competitive. Uh, my Lotic would be a lot better this metagame if it still got Icy Wind. Uh, unfortunately, it does not, which kind of changes things a bit from poor my Lotic, but it's still a very, very interesting Pokemon, and competitive is still a very good ability, especially considering the three main Intimidate users that I've seen so far are Crocodile, Arcanine, and Gyarados, all of which do not, like... My Lotic. So just having my Lotic as like kind of a physical, I don't know, just like just like an answer to intimidate could be very, very, very valuable. So those are kind of kind of my initial suggestions, guys. I hope you found this was found this interesting. Uh, if you have any suggestions for me or any Pokemon you want to see, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, my near future plans for the series are I want to cover the other Tapus and I want to show the Ultra Beasts. So. Um, I'm still going to be mixing up other Pokemon in there as well, but I want to prioritize those things. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and share this video out with your friends who are trying to get into competitive Pokemon, VGC especially, um, like definitely VGC. So yes, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.